Hello viewers. Today's discussion is about security in databases. Before discussing security issues in database, first let us discuss about the basics of database concepts. What is a database? It is a collection of data and we have a set of rules that define how this collection of data is organized. For example, we have a database, this happens to be one database, it is a collection of data. And who will define the rules? Who will define the way data, data should be organized? Who will decide which user can be given permission to access and which user should be restricted? So all are done by a person called database administrator, simply called as DB admin. He is a person who defines the rules that organize the data and also controls who should have access to what parts of the data. So again we have an example of this database here. And you need a software that can interact with the database and perform the desired operations. That software is said to be DBMS called Frontend. So it interacts with the database through a program. The user interacts with the database through a program called DBMS, informally known as Frontend. Next one is, what are the components of a database? So the first component is record. It contains one related group of data. You can see this, a, a record has been highlighted. Uh, with employee ID 11, allies Simpson, female, quality assurance manager, the whole row re represents one, one record. Each record contains fields or elements. So this 11, allies, these are all the fields. Okay. One, oh, one record contains the elements. And the logical structure of a database is called a schema. So the whole structure happens to be a schema. And from that whole structure, if you take the part of the structure, that happens to be what subschema is. A particular user may have access to only part of the database called a subschema. The name of the each column is called an attribute and in relation is a set of columns. So ID, first name, these are all the attributes. These are all the attributes and uh, a relation is one that is id corresponding to a uh, first name and last name happens to be what a yeah. uh, relation is so user interacts with the database through commands to the dbms that retrieve modify add or delete the fields and records of the database a command is called a query how user interacts with the database? User interacts by passing the queries and gets the results. And the operations which they perform is they retrieve the data, they modify the data, they add or delete the fields and records in a database. For example, select star from employee where first name is equal to Williams. This is a query passed by a user to the DBMS to the database and all the records pertaining to first name as Williams will get displayed. A part of a part of the database get displayed. The result of executing a query is a subschema. So we are not going to get the whole database. Only what part of the database is going to get is, is going to be displayed. It's a subschema. Other more complex selection criteria are possible with logical operators such as and or and not less than less than greater than or equal to for example select star from employee where first name is equal to williams and supervisor is equal to one so it checks both the conditions and get and retrieve the data which satisfies these two conditions we can also merge two sub schema on a common element by using a join query the result of this operation is a subschema whose records have the same value for the common element. Okay. Um, next one is why we are going for 
this databases what are the advantages we will get if you use this databases the first and for foremost advantage is shared access so in this diagram you can see this only one database is there that is shared by two users of course many users can share one database if we don't have this concept then then this files need to be replicated in all the machines so the first benefit of using this database is shared access next one is minimal redundancy since the resources are shared this data files are sh shared no need to replicate so minimal redundancy users do not have to collect and maintain their own set of data because data is kept common and it is accessed by more people data consistency please change to a data value affects all users of a data value so if if it is a centralized one and if i change a particular value that gets reflected to all the users no need to change the data to all the users just for simple one it is there in uh, in a centralized one and data value change affects all the users next one is next benefit is data integrity data values are protected against accidental or malicious undesirable changes this is what we need to provide so we need to uh, provide the integrity of the data which is in database and controlled access only authorized users are allowed to view or to modify data values so suppose if you have a bank database people who are having accounts in that particular bank are allowed to view and the people who are working on that bank are allowed to modify the data values so we have a controlled access this is another one benefit now let us discuss about the security requirements of a database system so what are the security measures you need to provide to ensure that the database is secure first one is physical database integrity the data of a database are immune to physical problems such as power failures and someone can reconstruct the database if it is destroyed through a through this problem so the first requirement is it need to be what it need to be kept safe from all this physical problems physical database integrity second problem is logical database integrity the structure of the database is to be preserved with logical integrity of database a modification to a value of one field does not affect the other fields so the structure of the database need to be what maintained third one is element integrity the data contained in each element are accurate this is also a important requirement fourth fourth one is auditability it is possible to track who or what change what has accessed the elements in the database so all this what we call uh, log data need to be maintained who accessed what parts of data who changed the data all these things it need to be recorded so so that we can audit next one uh, next one requirement security requirement is access control the user is allowed to access only authorized data and different users can be restricted to different modes of access read and write as our previous example of bank database a uh, bank customer is allowed to read only their own data writing the data is done by the user the bank employee and next uh, next security requirement is user authentication every user is identified both for audit trail and for permission to access certain data so only the authorized persons need to access the data this is also one security requirement and last requirement is user can access the database in general and all the data for which they are authorized so data data should be available for the users as well as uh, as well as for the customers for our for in our bank example the data need to be available for the users as well as 
as well as for the customers who are going to view that data so with these requirements we can we can have a secure we can achieve this security in databases first one is phys physical database integrity logical database integrity uh, element integrity auditability access control user authentication and availability so thank you so much hope you will understand this concept